Good afternoon. I appreciate everybody coming out to our regular scheduled meeting today. And uh, I'm going to ask Dr. Foster if he would lead us in prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Lord, we ask your blessing upon the board this day as we contemplate our agenda and as we pass rules and regulations and agenda items that impact on the lives of children, of parents, and of other taxpayers in Mobile County. We ask, too, that you guide our staff here at the central office, our staff in the respective schools in Mobile County, that they would be of service to those children whom, through your own will, you have given to us and expect us to provide for them. We ask, too, that you would bless those people in harm's way protecting our country, that you would bless the uh, armed forces who do that, the police and fire departments and other first responders. These things, in Christ Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic. I have a chance to look at the minutes for our last meeting. Move. And the uh, Wilson High School Blunt High School competition on what we titled as the Mobile Pritchett Legacy Classic. The purpose of the Legacy Classic is to continue to build up the spirit in both schools and continue the legacy that has happened with the former Power Aid Classic that Blunt and Wilson used to play. Uh, we invited uh, Mr. Levi Washington who was a former coach at Wilson High School to be our honor guest this week. He and his family will be here tomorrow night for a reception at Wilson High School, which is open to the public at 6 p.m. And then on Friday at 5 p.m., we will have the pep rally with the alumni band coming back to play at Wilson High School. And after the alumni band played for the pep rally, the paramedics will be there. Before we go over to jump on Dr. Crenshaw at Blunt High School, <laughs> we're going to all march over to the stadium <laughs> for the football game. And then, and then on march right Saturday there. morning, we're going to uh, present a special picnic for Mr. Washington and his family and our honored guests. And I petitioned Mr. Marion Shepherd at the city of Mobile that in order to make sure we have a crowd, he has moved the city beginning league football first four games to be moved to Wilson High School so that we could have a crowd and honor our guests with a little dedication. Then we're going to dedicate the football field as the Levi Lawrence Washington Legacy Memorial Field at Wilson High School. And thank you. Mr. Chairman, I had the opportunity. I don't know if the board is aware. I'm sure Ms. Peek knows this month is Civics and Government Awareness Month. So everybody knew that? Raise your hand now for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the so social science supervisor, Mr. Uh, Nathaniel Smith, uh, has got a bunch of uh, elected officials to go around the schools. I had the pleasure of going to three schools to talk to the classes and had a wonderful time doing that. And I think it's a great thing to learn um, how our government works and how you work within the system and so forth. So I want to commend. Uh, Mr. Smith and all the uh, schools that are participating. We just want to thank all of the central office personnel who came out on last Friday to partake in the uh, pregame festivities. Uh, I'm sure that they were well taken care of. <laughs> well fed. Yeah, well fed is what I want to say. 
Uh, I, too, also participated in the uh, civic awareness at Chestane Middle School and Barger High School. It was real uh, refreshing to know that uh, the seniors at Barger High School was quite aware of the three uh, forms of government, levels of government, but it was a real, real interesting. Um, going back to what Mr. Ballard said, uh, please come out and watch us run weeds and back across the railroad track. <laughs> Uh, I will judge the tailgating. <laughs> and Ms. Fox. That's right, Ms. Fox and I will judge the tailgating. I think y'all already got a favorable opinion already. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> Any other announcements? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I had the uh, privilege to uh, to participate in an open house the other evening at uh, my uh, grandson's school uh, and was able to uh, present a short uh, opening um, via a video that was shown to all of the uh, parents and everything. And uh, like uh, some of the other board members, I will also participate in the government awareness uh, week this week I'll be at um, Hankins tomorrow at nine o'clock. Okay. Any other announcements? Me and, no, me and Montgomery ain't doing nothing. No. <laughs> I, I'm glad that they've gotten uh, you three guys in the classroom. It was refreshing. I, was, I did get a thing to go, but I haven't got confirmation, <laughs> so they probably don't want me to be there. <laughs> We'll see that it's confirmed, <laughs> Ms. Fox. <laughs> That's okay. So you all right with this? That's right. I'm all right. All right. Reports and recognition. Okay. Can Mr. Battles, Lieutenant Colonel Barrow, Mr. Lang, and Chief Steve Zerlot please come forward? On Wednesday, August 12, 2015, the rope on the flagpole in front of May Eanes Middle School broke. School officials could not lower the American flag. On the advice of Lieutenant Colonel Robert Barrow, May Eanes Principal Kervin Lane contacted the local fire department for assistance. Not only did Mobile Fire Department Number 24 send a ladder truck to May Eanes to take down the flag, but firefighters also provided the school with a new rope and installed it. They did this on a moment's notice, going above and beyond the call of duty. Mobile County Public Schools would like to recognize and thank members of the Mobile Fire Department Number 24 for supporting May Eanes Middle and for ensuring that the American flag can be properly raised and lowered every day. Chief, we'd just like to thank you on behalf of the Board of School Commissioners. Uh, I know it would be an ethical violation, but somebody cut my flag and pulled in front of my house, so I got to pay somebody to get it done. But more importantly, though, Mr. Kerbin Lane, the new principal at Maine Middle School, uh, uh, has started off like a tiger in a tank. And with this ability to be able to raise the American flag, to continue to show our, not only our civic responsibility, but our patriotic responsibility, we want to thank the city of Mobile and you and your department. And, you know, the colonel there always is a great soldier and Mr. Lane. So on behalf of the Board of School Commission, we'd like to present to you from the, to the Fort Worth Fire Department number five, uh, a letter of appreciation for your commendation and thinking about us and our students. Come on. The crew who actually did this is on, on duty tomorrow. We work 24 hours on and 48 off, so Every day it's a different, different crew. So we'll make sure that these guys receive this certificate tomorrow. And it's always nice to be recognized when these guys do something good. Thank you. I just want to say uh, thank you again to Colonel Barrow for guiding my footstep on the correct actions to take. But I want to also say that the American flag is the highest symbol of high expectation that we have on each and every campus. 
And that's why it was very important. Thank you. Five minutes. <laughs> I, read, I read the information out there beforehand. Thank you. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here, first of all. Uh, first time being out here and addressing the board. Uh, and like I say, it's an honor and a privilege. Some of you are, are recognized from way back during the days, like Mr. Ballows, Mr. Crenshaw. We go back a long ways. And like I say, greeting from the Holy Land. The Holy Land being Trinity Garden. <laughs> Trinity Garden, the reason we call it the Holy Land, because Trinity Garden has more churches than the city of Mobile. If you don't believe me, go out there. You'll find four or five churches on one street. Anyhow, what I come to address you for today is, is the, the fact that we're getting a new school in the community. And uh, some of the graduate, well, all the, all the graduating classes have voiced uh, different opinions on what they think about the school. They think the school, getting the school is great. But there are some archives that's missing that we'd like to find out where they went, such as trophies, uh, plaques, uh, other items also. We've addressed the principal on some of them. We found some items, about 20% of the items. The rest of them we can't find. So we'd like to uh, task someone to try to find out where those items are because classes from 1964 through 1970 graduated from Trinity Garden, and we all had a meeting uh, last, last month. And they, like I said, they addressed quite a bit. What I've got here is oh, another thing they addressed also was the naming of the school, uh, the Hazel Farnier Chestang. We'd like to know, if possible, can we put the school name to Chestang Trinity Garden or Chestang Packer? I've got a list here, I mean, a, a, a history I'd like to pass out. Thank you. I've got a. Can everybody hear me good? Okay. I've got a list. That's, that is a history of, of the school itself. And uh, if you notice, Ms. Chestang is the one that's, that's really emphasized there. And during 1970, the school name was changed to Trinity Garden High School. And you're, look, you're, talking, you're listening to a, a person that graduated, 1967 graduate of Trinity Garden High School. Uh, Ms. Packer, Ms. Chestang, also taught me during the first grade and, and what we call, we used to call it Primer pre primer and primer. Now they call it uh, something else, pre-K, uh, pre okay? Uh, while you're reading that, uh, let me give you a little second to read. That is, that is the reason why we like to change the name to Ms. Chest, the name Ms. Chestang and not have Ms. Hazel Fonnie. Ms. Hazel Fonnie, the problems I've gotten so far, or the complaints I've gotten so far is that she has no ties whatsoever with the school, so we like to leave it the same or change it to Trinity Garden Chestang, or Chestang, if possible. Now I've got, I've got also have a, uh, I've also got a, a list of names that people have filed a petition to try to get the name changed if possible. Now who would I get this to? You can give it to me. Okay. There's a total of almost 500 names there. People in the community have signed and uh, like to have the name change, either stay the same. They have no problem with the school as far as the building of the school. They have no problem with the location of the school because the school, what I understand, is being turned around and the back of the school is going to be to the, to the community. And the face of the school is going to be facing I-65, which we have no problem with. Also, um, there's an emblem in the front of the school by the flagpole we call the Eagle's Nest. I am one of them that built, helped build that eagle nest. Mr. Dean was the instructor. Uh, we, that eagle nest has been there since the building of, of Trinity Garden High School, before, right after the school built, burned down, when they rebuilt the new school. And we would like to know, if possible, can we save that eagle's nest? That is the emblem of the school. Okay. Also, um, Mr. Coleman, you have one minute. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Also, um, I'd like to have, know if Mr. Crenshaw could come. We have a meeting again of, of, of the combined 
uh, graduates of Trinity Garden High School from 1964 to 1970. And we're going to be on the 17th of, of next month, 17th of September at 6 p.m. at the Dodge Center, and that's in Trinity Garden. And I'd like to know if Mr. Crenshaw, who is our representative, can, can make that meeting. I'll be there. Thank you. I appreciate it. I have any questions on me so far? Ms. I'm trying I, to wrap it up. I do want to say I did speak with Mr. Colvin and explain to him that the naming of a school does not mean necessarily have to be someone from that school. Uh, it's been pretty much the posture of looking for someone who has contributed to the school system uh, as a whole. Uh, that the system had several public hearings. We had a hearing here, had a hearing out at the school, and uh, uh, subsequently we, we uh, changed the name of the school. So I did explain that process to him, but I'll be at the meeting on the 17th. Thank you. Any questions, anybody? Right, thank you. Uh, I would like to, um, since we had the work session, I would like to call your attention to a couple of items, give you a little detail on it before we go through the actual uh, agenda. Uh, action item G4 was added. Uh, this was following a bid uh, on phase three of Murphy uh, renovation and repair. Uh, that's to uh, repair the auditorium and also install, reinstall the canopies that were on the Murphy campus. The low bidder for that contract was Ben Radcliffe Contractor Incorporated. The cost uh, of restoring the auditorium and the canopies, $3,974,382. That will be paid out of the 2003 bond and local capital funds. Action item G10, do you have a question? Yes. This is part of the help from the hurricane, I mean, from the tornado. Yes, we. And there was a budget number or something we, we thought it was going to cost to redo the school. What phase? This is phase. This three. is phase three. Yes. Uh, how's, how's it for our budget? How's it going? Uh, this will deplete the 2003 capital funds that were allotted for this, and then uh, extend into the 2016 local capital funds about $900,000, and then Tommy, I'm gonna ask you to add any other funds that are uh, yes, involved with Murphy. The original funding from the state for PSEA was $15 million of PSEA funds. The board matches the 15 to the 5.4 million of the 03 local bond capital money. Combining those together, we get over $20.4 million. The first bid, the main bid of the building was about nine million. The next phase is looking at, uh, there's the Language Arts Building uh, and uh, or the uh, Natatorium, the uh, Athletic Complex. So you don't you know how much that's going to be, Tom? We'll use the rest of the money. <laughs> It'll take it. Go <laughs> ahead, Tom. <laughs> So, I say that very quickly before you start spending it for something else. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, was, oh, I just have one. So the 900000 would be in the, 2000, the 2016 budget. Yes. And then whatever else you need, will that be in will that be 2016 or will it be the Yeah, 13 covers. Uh, Pulling out of our local funds 
which is in the main building, phase two, is still in the main building. We've got to backfill all that with our new furniture, equipment, technology, and then they do the same in the auditorium. So, but, but to answer your question, yes, it's 16 funds. Okay, so my, my final question, and one is this. So, when we do our budget for next year, that's going to be part of it, right? I would so, say. Yeah, okay, so in the facility, our next facilities meeting, if you don't mind, we got, can you bring this all up to date on that with everything so we can, yeah, we can, I appreciate that. Well, Tom, we're going to just find the clearance from all this. When do we, when do you project that uh, we will have done everything we need to do in Murphy and we can ballpark? December, December 16th. <laughs> Ball, ballpark? Uh, 17. Um, probably 16? 17 when you yeah, think. So we'll, we'll wrap up. It, it's, uh, you know, when you look at it, it's uh, English language arts building versus the historic natatorium. So we're, we're working through that. And it all will depend <coughs> on what the estimate of the cost is to uh, utilize the rest of the funds or how much we have to use. Are the plans, uh, in the plans, that are call for doing anything to the gym? Well, that, that's, our, that's our next, next phase. Next phase. Uh, Please. We're really just taking one building in. The natatorium slash gym. Okay. That's all. <coughs> okay. The other that we added was G10. Uh, that's a contract for Bryan High School to have their homecoming dance at the Abba Shrine Center, uh, $3,500 out of their local funds. G17 was a contract with Dorset Productions for lighting and music for the basic Baker High School uh, homecoming dance at uh, the fairgrounds for $6,000 out of their local funds. Uh, G18, you recall we pulled the um, lease on the um, old Yellow Pine building, the old Ella Grant facility. Um, uh, Tommy went back. Uh, talked with the um, uh, representatives from the Emanuel Seven-Day Adventist Church. Uh, they want to house their junior academy there. And so they worked out an agreement where um, they, the, the church will maintain the old building, they'll protect it while they're in there, and they'll pay the uh, salvage insurance cost on that building uh, should there be any problems. Uh, it will really benefit the system to have that building occupied so it uh, is not, uh, any, not any destruction there. And so it, there will be uh, no monetary involvement on that, just an exchange of services. G20, um, this is, uh, Mr. Hack uh, has asked that we send the salary schedule out for the first reading, and that is to get input uh, on the salary schedule to go back and then schedule hearings uh, to uh, uh, get that in motion so we can work on the salary schedule uh, during the month of September and have it approved on the September agenda. So that's just to ask you approve that we send it out for input. Action item G36 uh, is uh, the recruitment. Each year uh, we do a blanket uh, approval of the recruitment trips for the HR staff. Uh, we'd ask that you approve those trips and the expenses as listed. G41 we added, uh, we would ask that uh, you approve the uh, uh, contract with the Drug Education Council to continue the drug screening program. Uh, that is a, a voluntary program a, with uh, students being included who are in our athletic and extracurricular programs uh, in grades 8 through 12. And um, that is on a, a cost basis, but it's not to exceed $50,000. And then G49 through 53 is our uh, regular cancellation of summer supplements that were paid. 
So with that, those are the agenda items that were added. Um, Mrs. Uh, Chambers has been so kind to do that, but I've also told her uh, that we promise we're gonna do better with getting them all on the agenda. September, moving into September is just a crunch this time. So with that, item G1, I'd ask that you approve the Adelia Williams Elementary School, uh, the re-roofing of the main building. Uh, the lowest bidder was All South Contractors, uh, $339,225. Um, and we would ask that you approve that. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chairman. <laughs> yes, sir. Move sir. approval of items one through 15. Redford High School band room. I want to express my um, congratulations to the superintendent and the people at Murphy for naming the band room in honor of Mr. E.B. Coleman and uh, Mr. Ira and his brother Twindle. Mm -hmm. Both of those were great music musicians, great contributors to the music and the arts, and I think that both of them will get rec great recognition. But more importantly, it will continue our ability to show that we are concerned about all students and all heritage in our school system. Thank you very much. And I think the other thing about that, Dr. Crenshaw, that they get the full or did y'all really get all that work out or you know? What's that? When you talk about the names, did you want to get full on this? Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I just bought it up. We checked on it. Mm -hmm. So it's all good? Right, we're good. Okay. Yeah. All right. And it is. Motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carried. Action item G16, it asks that you approve a contract with Betchel, Behav Be Betchel Behavioral Services to continue the six-year program that's been in place for, um, to provide services for students within the Asperger Autism Spectrum. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> in, as much, in as much as all these items have been discussed or the one that was added by the superintendent in our work session, I'd like to offer a motion that we approve items 16 through 36. Second. Okay, so I have a motion to uh, approve item 16 through 36. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And just, just a reminder, if this is your first time being here, we should have a work session to discuss all these line items so we can vote for them. All right, Ms. Peach, 37. Action item G37 and ask that you approve the contract with the Renaissance Hotel for the Riverview Plaza Hotel for the Signature Academy Conference on February the 22nd through 24th, uh, a minimum cost of $4,775. Uh, that cost will be covered, uh, plus any additional cost by registration fees. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I move for approval, action items 37 through 53. Motion second for line items 37 through 53. Uh, any further discussion? Yes, I have one question. Okay. Uh, this was a question I asked the other day uh, about item number 43, uh, the learning the internet. I noticed Miss uh, Michelle Collins is here. She, Miss Pete, can I ask her a question, please? She's the IT. Certainly. Miss Collier, can you come up a second? I didn't know who Miss Collier was. <laughs> I knew who Miss White was, but I, by the way, she got married a month ago. I did. <laughs> yes, sir. You're the uh, IT instructional specialist uh, yes, person, correct? Miss um, Peek explained to us that the, uh, this uh, money that we're spending over a three-year period for local funds is to, I think, help with keyboarding skills, especially in the area of the Aspire testing yes, and stuff. Sir. Is there any other things that it's going to be, we're going to be doing with it, uh, Michelle? So this program is designed to allow our students starting at kindergarten, even preschool, um, to be able to practice their keyboarding skills. That mm -hmm. is the foundation of that program. Uh, as you know, we haven't provided that for our students, and they are very, as I'm carrying my iPad, they're accustomed to doing that with their thumbs on their devices, and they have not been practicing uh, with a keyboard and ACT Aspire does use, utilize that keyboard. So that was one of our primary <coughs> targets. It also offers us an internet safety course, which we desperately need for our students and, uh, and our, staff, you know, our faculty and staff so they can be proactive in teaching the ways that we could be safe with the internet 
usage. Uh, in addition to that, there is a course that they can take, all of our students that they can do for uh, nine weeks preparing for our next gen assessments. So it has, it's kind of an all-in-one that's gonna give them some great technology skills, but it'll give them some great practices too for those ACT Aspire testing, online testing. Do you know any other districts or anything that's used this program? Oh yes, oh yes sir, and so some of the districts that I have been reporting early results have shown gains because the students are not having to think about how to type on their responses and they're not questioning their drags and drops, they're not questioning those skills by the practice that they've been given in the program and they gained three to five percent on last year's scores. And this is time. Right. right. It's time. And, you know, if you don't have those skills at hand, then you've got, you're concentrating more on the formatting and the actual technical skills when we want them concentrating on that content. I never thought going from a pad back to a keyboard. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a difference too, and our students practice, they use their thumbs or they use their index fingers, and so they're hunting and pecking and trying to think, and it's a timed or time it test. Is. So okay. then you have to think about what I want to type, plus also figure out where the keys are. So it is, a, it is an opportunity for us to do some great improvement there. And the clock is counting down. I mean, they actually have a clock that's counting down while they're doing this. I need to enroll in that class. I will be happy to get you some, <laughs> some license for that. Yes, Dr. Sir. Crenshaw and I would like to take the course. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Ms. Chair, go ahead. No, no. No, not on that. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? Motion carried. Ms. Chairman, I want to go back and ask to be read into the minutes that I abstain on uh, uh, items 15. My son works for Alter Point, and uh, I don't think it's appropriate for me to vote on items 14 and 15, so let the record reflect that I abstain on items 14 and 15. Action item 54, it asks that you apply, uh, approve the certified resignations listed under separate cover. So that were none added to 54 through 59? There probably were, but we would have highlighted them in bold on the first morning. Yeah. Okay. So move then, we approve item 54 through 59. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, action items H, consent agenda, we present to you H1, out of county travel. Move approval, uh, Mr. Chairman, for H1 and H2. Okay. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, for items H1 and H2, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Information item, uh, well, uh, expulsions, uh, I, I1 and 2, present to the, those two expulsions under separate cover and ask you to approve them. Mr. Chairman, move for approval, uh, I1 and 2. All right. Second. Second. I have a motion to second approve items I1 and 2. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, information items J, J1, let me explain. Um, Mobile County has had preschool programs uh, that began with just four uh, 26 years ago. Uh, our programs have been developed since then. Uh, in the ensuing recent years, um, the early Ch Office of Early Childhood um, Education uh, under the governor's auspices has uh, begun to implement pre-K education. It's called the First Class Pre-K Program. Uh, we have been working with the Commissioner of Early Childhood Education to align our programs with the uh, First Class Pre-K Program, and you have a booklet on each one of those. Um, this is uh, the nationally uh, recognized, um, it's re recognized as first in the nation currently, the first class program. Uh, it will be to our benefit to align with this program. Uh, we will get additional funds through the state to uh, add materials and equipment, uh, particularly equipment to our classrooms. And so we are um, proposing at this time that we will transition to 
the first class pre-K program. We want to be recognized in the state of Alabama as having a top quality program along with the others. This will be 50 classes that will become first class. We have three first class uh, programs that the state has totally funded and this would be converting. So as an information item, we'd uh, ask for your support on that and then if you have any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. I, I have a question. Yes, sir. You know, I voiced my concern about the pre-K program previously, especially in regards to uh, Mobile Community Action with the Head Start program. Yes. How, how would that, would that exclude those, those schools that have Head Start and don't have the pre-K, would that exclude them from getting the materials that are involved with it? Uh, yes, there has to be a pre-K program in place. And what it will give us an opportunity to do, though, is to continue to apply for grants where the state will fund um, a pre-K pre classroom in other schools that don't have them at this time. The Head Start classes are simply using the facility uh, that we have in place to be part of that structure of school. It's part of that structure, though, but it's still eliminating the pre-Ks in the school, which I represent. That's my concern. I believe that my students will be denied the accessibility because of that they don't have pre-K and head start in the same building, in the same school. Right, well, the, the pre-K program, the first class program doesn't cover Head Start, so the- I don't want speak, it does not cover Head Start. I'm talking about, but I, my, my pre-K program at Howard has been eliminated. So that's denying my students accessibility to the ability to get the, the same thing that everybody else is getting. That's what I'm concerned about. Yes, sir, and we, I'll be glad to get Ms. Roberts to give more information on that, but it's based on the number of students that can be brought in and be enrolled in those schools. Well, you know, this morning as I watched Roland Martin, I'm going to brought that to the board too. They gave a scaling report of, of Katrina for 10 year celebration where they went back and evaluated the school system in the, in the New Orleans system. They made a comparison between charter schools and vouchers and gave an assessment as to what was the public perception of charter schools and, 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 and over 80% of the population had voiced their approval for the vouchers and for the charter schools, which I think is a dangerous precedent because it sets them, you know, we keep talking about charter schools take away from public school funding, then there are a lot of intervening variables on the other side that's gonna have some significant impact on our system. And that's what my concern is, not to be concerned about just what's in my district, but the entire system as it impacts, because I asked Ms. Chambers this morning if she would call TV1 to get a copy of the report that Roland Martin gave this morning comparing that so that we could share it with our staff and with our school so that we could see that we're really moving. And, and, and that's what makes me so afraid about, you talk about the pre-K and then you got the head start where we are eliminated in, in, in uh, Howard. Uh, I think that that's uh, denying my people the accessibility to uh, pre-K and what's really I need to be doing. That's just my opinion. And, and we'll keep talking to you about that. Uh, but what I would say is that this, this will give us an opportunity to expand our pre-K program even more. Uh, and I appreciate that. And we'll talk some more about the Head Start units, but uh, that, that we go ahead and uh, we will transition, we'll become part of the state's first class program. And it is, um, you know, like I said, a nationally uh, recognized program. So I wanted to make you aware of that and ask for your support for that. Action item J2, uh, we'd ask, uh, we provide the monthly financial statements for you. And in J3, information items, purchase orders of $5,000 and over. And that concludes the agenda items. Okay. Any old business? Uh, or superintendent requests? Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. Uh, I, I neglected to mention something a little bit earlier, uh, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't, but um, when 
Dr. Crenshaw went back and abstained uh, on those items, uh, I think 14 and 15, that he abstained on it reminded me that uh, uh, the University of Mobile had uh, invited me out to speak to their education classes on ethics and uh, on what would constitute ethics violations and these kinds of things, what the ex ethics law was. And I, I had a really wonderful day yesterday meeting with uh, young men and young ladies who were students out there at, uh, at the University of Mobile who are in teacher education and uh, answering a lot of questions and so forth. Uh, and I just wanted to bring that uh, to our attention to, and they're very interested in, in the kinds of things that go on at uh, in the Mobile County Public School System. No, I wasn't about to say you were in violation, but <laughs> had you not abstained on those, then it would have gave more merit to why I was talking to these people out at the University of Mobile. <laughs> in, other words, in other words, he was setting you up. <laughs> That will be at the board retreat, uh, the final report on that. And also, uh, during that retreat, you have a special call meeting. Uh, we'll be asking you to approve several, a uh, couple of items. One is my evaluation at that time is why you call it. And then we'll also have the um, uh, strategic plan with the vision and mission. But you'll have a report to look at the finished product before we ask you to vote on it. 14th and 15th of September, Monday and Tuesday at the uh, Cypress Auditorium. Okay. And then also, uh, you know, in our information office, we get all, you know, the financial stuff. And so I want all these guys to know part of that, that plan you have is all these line items in our 2016 budget will reflect back to our new mission statement and all that. Time. Right. Uh, all of, uh, and it's being, and I'm, I'm looking for Dr. Smith, but uh, the strategic plan is being uploaded into eBoard Solutions. And uh, you want to explain how that will work, Dr. Smith? Dr. Smith, any time that we have a board item, expenditure of money or, or mm -hmm. anything like that, will it indicate uh, what you're saying? Will it indicate on that item uh, go, goes back directly to this is one of our priorities? Is that mm -hmm. what it's going to yes, do? Actually, when an item is, is submitted, the process of submitting the item, the, the person recommending the item is to go on the agenda board and make the connection of how it went. So, so actually, oh, that's good. Every and it'll be verified by eBoard Solutions, so it'll all be there. Be we'll be totally aligned with our own with our own strategic plan. We'll, when we completed our training in next year, which we can take you all through and, and overview of that, then it'll let us sort and look and see, obviously by category and by by goal and by focus area, you know, what items are, are coming up, you know, before we launch. Well, that's going to be helpful because if we're doing something that's not. We'll, not, we'll need to look at it, yeah. Um, Right, and, and it'll all be tied in. Likewise, when people do go through our grant process, which we have done for the year, uh, they, that will also be judged against, are you asking for something that fits our goals on our strategic plan? So it's gonna help us be much more aligned. The other thing along that line, different, different uh, subject altogether, uh, at the retreat, uh, there are a number of reports that you get every month, financial reports, 
and I've asked Ms. Simpson to go through those reports and really show you what comes out each month and what the meaning of them are. I, I have a right down the hall for me, so I can walk down and ask, but just to go through that and show you what those reports mean. The other thing, um, there had been some questions about are the items on the budget, uh, on the agenda covered in the budget? And Ms. Simpson, they have every budget item, every board item, and they check those before board meetings to make sure what's been put on the agenda is covered. So we, we try to do a lot of checks and balances on that. Managing a almost a, a three quarters of a billion dollar budget is huge. and. I, Mrs. Simpson and her team do a, a great job with that. So we'll get you some more information on that. And the person who has that knowledge can explain it to you. Um, the other thing I'd say along those lines, if you would check your calendars, please. Um, August the 31st, next Monday at 5 o'clock, the first budget hearing to get input on the budget. And September the 9th at five o'clock to get input on the budget. Yes, sir, a hearing in the boardroom for the public. What time? Uh, five o'clock. Gives everybody an opportunity to get off work and, and come. Ms. Chambers, if you'll send that out. Uh, Monday, August the 31st, at 5 p.m., that's next Monday at 5, and September the 9th, that's the day after Labor Day. I think that should be a Tuesday. <laughs> 9th, did we say Wednesday? Wednesday, okay. Wednesday the 9th at 5 o'clock. Along with calendars, uh, tomorrow morning uh, at uh, 7 o'clock at uh, Commissioner Battles Church, Stone Street, there's an ecumenical prayer breakfast for um, Mobile County Public School educators. It's at 7 at Stone Street. And get there with enough time to park because I think there's going to be probably a couple hundred people. Just took care of that and regular schedule for next month. Uh, let me ask one question. Uh, in September, you had indicated you wanted to go through September with the one o'clock afternoon meetings through September. Is that still? And then we go back on regular schedule in October. Okay. Oh, uh, you know, just general announcements. Um, you recognize Mrs. Collier, who. Um, is, has just gotten married and we congratulate her. Uh, we have another wedding coming up on September the 12th. This will be Dr. Susan Smith's last meeting is Dr. Susan Smith. She will be Dr. Susan Hinton after the 12th of September. So, you know, love is in the air in the Mobile County Public Schools. You change all these names, you gotta remember who we, you gotta stick to what you got. I don't know, is September the, <laughs> it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyhow, it's a, you know, a busy a busy month with, with uh, or a couple of months with weddings. So congratulations to both of our leadership team on, on their nuptials. Move for adjournment. Aye.